Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. For those of you who have been following my content for a while, I'm sure you've noticed that Mr. Kang and Mr. Bigot have yet to show their faces around here since the Empire from Nothing moved out of that poorly decorated and embarrassingly animated studio and relocated to this luxurious palace in the royal capital of Niamasi. That was no accident either. See, since then, our Imperial Army has swelled to an impressive size of 37,600 warriors who have been vigorously guarding our comment section, <coughs> I mean, uh, our, our borders from the likes of Kangs and Bigots. With that said, today we'll be talking about- Um, actually, it's Dr. Kangs, just so you know. Oh. Great. So, you're a doctor now, I see? What university? The, um... Uh, uh, I mean, that don't matter. You're just gonna assume a line, ain't you? No, no, no. I don't care if you have a PhD or not. I don't have one either. I was just curious about what university you got it from. That's all. He ain't even got none. He's just another line <laughs> here making stuff up just to feel better about himself. The fuck you say, bro? You heard me, boy. Y'all always claiming y'all got to America's before the white man and shit. That's because we did, bro. But the white man always just lying and hiding the truth. <laughs> Y'all primitive black negroids didn't even know how to build boats at all. And so the white man showed up and you're telling me y'all discovered the America? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, how did you guys get past the guards? And uh, secondly, you guys are both so wrong and I'm going to tell you why right now. <sighs> well, at least they're outside of the palace instead of inside of here with me. So firstly, I'll give a disclaimer that we do not know if Africans ever sailed to the Americas in pre-Columbian times because all indicators of any such voyage are anecdotal at best. This is not to say that that won't change in the future. After all, we had no conclusive evidence of Viking settlements in the Americas until the middle of the 20th century, despite the fact that Viking voyages predated Columbus's by nearly 500 years. For example, we have a vague account written by Egyptian scholar Alomari in which the king of Mali, Mansa Musa, told him that he became the king after his predecessor amassed a large fleet of ships that sailed west into the Atlantic Ocean in the year 1311, never to be seen again. While this is a very interesting and thought-provoking story to say the least, the problem is not only is there no evidence of this fleet ever making it to the Americas, but there is also no evidence it existed in the first place. Additionally, the Mali and Songhai empires as well as most Islamic caliphates throughout world history were notorious for royal intrigue, perpetuated by rivaling princes due to the presence of polygamy in Islamic culture. That being said, it was very common for newly crowned kings to make up stories or justifications for attaining the throne after several wars or coups over their brothers. I'm not saying that this is what happened because I have no evidence for that either, but either way you look at it, there is no conclusive evidence of Africans ever making it to the Americas in pre-Columbian times. Then you have sculptures like Olmecs that show superficial Africanoid features, and again, it's anecdotal. I could just as easily find sculptures in West Africa that date back to the 13th century that look similar to Chinese people, but there's no evidence that the Chinese ever sailed to West Africa during those times. A sculpture that just so happens to look like a particular race is going to do nothing more than frustrate any logical conclusions that you could ever hope to draw. And as for you Mr. Bigot, the assumption that Africans were primitive squatting in the mud without any idea or concept of lands across the water is terribly wrong. While I could offer you a pile of evidence to the contrary, perhaps the most excellent example of this is the Swahili culture. The Swahili people were involved in a trade network that stretched across the Indian Ocean. It's referred to by some, actually, as the Silk Road of the Sea. And no, they weren't just one tiny link of short-distance merchants in the chain of trade. African merchants were building their own ships called Mtepe, completely indigenous to East Africa, and were built primarily in what is now modern-day Kenya. The Mtepe were reportedly 40 to 75 feet in length and could carry up to 50 tons of cargo. They were also reportedly much faster than their Arabic Dao counterparts. Swahili merchants used these vessels to sail directly to China and India following the seasonal monsoon winds. The extensiveness of this trade is evidenced by countless Chinese artifacts found throughout East Africa that date back as far as the Ming Dynasty, some of which have been found as far inland as the Kingdom of Zimbabwe in Southeast Africa. And yes, this trade predated the treasure ships of Xinhe in the 15th century. There are even African diaspora groups in India to present day known as the Sidi people, and around 1489, they even founded their own kingdom in India. Yeah, it was called the Janjira state. So like I was saying, 
My melanated bros was traveling all over the world, so they discovered America and India. And that's why Indians got melanated skin like me, and why we call Native Americans Indians. You dumbass, you clearly said they never discovered the America, so obviously they were too primitive to sail there. Unless they were floating on old logs or some shit. <laughs> and this is why racist people, whether they are black or white, think the way they do about African history. Confirmation bias. It is important to approach history in an accurate and objective manner and remove personal biases. Confirmation bias will result in nothing more than ignoring all the facts that don't line up with what you personally want to believe. This is a very normal behavior among human populations, notably in areas that involve religious beliefs. However, when you are someone who believes that African people had some superb empire that stretched around the entire world, or on the other hand, that they accomplished nothing more than mud huts and straw skirts, making assumptions and digging for any info that confirms these assumptions for your own personal satisfaction does nothing more than injustice the historical community. These biased beliefs, whether they be the negative ones perpetuated by Mr. Bigot or the overly embellished ones perpetuated by Dr. Kangs, they are nothing more than two sides of the same coin. Hey, shut the fuck up, nigga. You know what, Kangs? That's something I can actually agree on you with for once. I'm sick of this know-it-all preaching his nonsense. <clears throat> anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this skit and you would like to see more of them, leave me a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.